Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to look at 10 commonly confused pairs of words. I will show you how to avoid the confusion and use all of these correctly without making mistakes. There are two quizzes in this lesson, one in the middle and one in the end for you to check your understanding. So let's jump in. The first pair of words are lose and loose. The word lose with a single O is a verb. The most common meaning of this verb is to not have something because you can't find it. For example, I don't take my watch when I go swimming so that I don't lose it. Notice that the last sound in this word is z, lose. Another meaning is to fail to win a competition, as in the team will be out of the tournament if it loses this match. Loose with two O's is an adjective that means not fixed or not attached strongly. For example, it looks like you have a loose button on your shirt. Here, the last sound is s, loose. One of my teeth is loose. I think it's going to fall off. To recap the pronunciation, lose has a z sound at the end and loose has a s sound at the end. Lose, loose. Number two is the pair of every day and every day. The difference in spelling between these forms is the space. When we write every day with a space, it's an adverb phrase that simply means each day. In most situations, this is the form you should use. For example, I get up at 7 a.m. every day. He goes to the gym every day and so on. When it's written without a space, every day is an adjective that means common or ordinary. I need to buy a pair of jeans for everyday wear, meaning for daily use. The best teachers explain difficult concepts using simple everyday language. That means using ordinary language. So remember that everyday with a space means each day and without a space it means common or ordinary. Next up are the words maybe and maybe. Again the difference is the space. These words are very close in meaning. Both of them are used to make guesses or talk about possibility. When we write maybe as a single word, it's an adverb. Take this sentence, it will rain tomorrow. Here the main verb is rain and there's the helping verb will. This is a modal verb used to make predictions about the future. So this sentence sounds like I'm confident that it will rain tomorrow. But if I'm not so sure, I can say maybe it will rain tomorrow. So that maybe at the beginning just makes it a little softer. I'm not so confident. Instead, we can also say it may rain tomorrow or it might rain tomorrow. Here, we have used the modal verb may or might, same meaning, to make a weak prediction or guess about the future. Here's another example. Let's say that a baby is crying. Someone asks, why is the baby crying? And the answer is, she is hungry. That sounds like we're very sure that that's why the baby is crying. But what if we're not so sure? Simple. Add maybe to the beginning of the sentence. But I have a question for you. What is the main verb in this sentence? It's is, which is a present tense form of be. There's no helping verb here because we don't need one in the present tense. So here's another way we can say this. She may be hungry. Here, may is a modal verb and be is the main verb in the sentence. This is always true when we write may and be as separate words. May is a modal verb that shows uh, uncertainty and be is the main verb. One last example. I forgot to get my brother a birthday present. Maybe that is why he's angry with me. You can also say that may be why he is angry with me. If you want, stop the video, read all of this and make sure you understand, then play the video again and continue. Number four is the pair of desert and dessert. Desert with only one S is a noun that refers to an area covered with sand where there's no water or plant life. 
For example, the Sahara is the largest desert in the world. The word dessert refers to something sweet that's eaten at the end of a meal, like cake, pie, or ice cream. So after you have dinner at a friend's place, you can ask, what's for dessert? Now as for me, I love having chocolate cake for dessert. Notice the way that we pronounce these words. Both of them have a z sound in the middle. The difference is in how we say the first vowel, desert with an e sound and with the stress on the first syllable, desert. Dessert with an e sound and with the stress on the second syllable, dessert. It's really simple, but there's one little exception. The word with the single s can also be pronounced desert in one situation, when it's used as a verb, and it means to leave someone without help. Darling, I promise I'll never desert you. I'll always be by your side. A very romantic line, but if this is confusing for you, don't worry. This use is not so important. Just remember that desert is an area covered with sand and with no water or plant life, and dessert is something sweet that's eaten at the end of a meal. Number five is principal and principal, which both sound the same. Principal, spelled with A-L at the end, is an adjective that means main or most important. For example, the principal aim of this channel is to bring free English lessons to all learners. Principal aim means the main aim. Principal can also be a noun that means the head of a school because he or she is the most important person in the school. I think you're in trouble. The principal wants to see you. The word principal, spelled with L-E at the end, is a noun that means a theory or a rule. To be a good musician, you should learn the basic principles of music theory. It can also mean a moral rule, that is, a rule for good behavior. I never cheat on exams because it goes against my principles. So principle with A-L means main, most important, or the head of a school, and principle with L-E is a theory or rule. All right, now it's time for the first exercise. This will help us to practice the first five pairs of words that we just discussed. There are 10 sentences on the screen. In each one, I want you to choose the correct word. Stop the video, think about your answers, then play the video again and check. Okay, here are the answers. If you want, stop the video and check them with your answers. All right, let's now turn to number six, compliment and compliment. The difference in spelling between these two words is the one letter in the middle, I or E, but both words are pronounced the exact same way. The word compliment with an I is a verb that means to praise someone for something. For example, I must compliment you on your English. It's excellent. So I'm praising you for your English skills. With the same meaning, it can also be used as a noun that means a comment or expression of praise. Please give my compliments to the chef. It's common to say this to a waiter in a restaurant when you really enjoyed the meal. When someone pays you a compliment, that is when someone praises you, you can say, thank you for the compliment. The word compliment with an E is normally a verb that means to make something better, complete, or perfect. So if we say that A compliments B, it means that A makes B better or complete. For example, her scarf complements her sweater perfectly. It means that the scarf makes the sweater look more complete or more attractive. And with the same meaning, compliment can be used as a noun that means a thing that improves or completes something else. Vanilla ice cream provides the best complement to apple pie. That means it tastes great if you eat vanilla ice cream when you also eat apple pie. So compliment with an I means to praise someone for something and with an E it means to make something better, complete or perfect. Next up are ensure and ensure which are usually pronounced the same way. Ensure spelled with an E at the beginning means the same thing as make sure. You say it when you want to tell someone to definitely do something, as in, 
Before signing any contract, ensure that you read and fully understand it. We must ensure that this doesn't happen again. In both of these sentences, we can use make sure in the place of ensure and the meaning would be the same. The word ensure with I at the beginning is also a verb and it means to purchase insurance for something. For example, we've just insured our car against theft. That means if our car gets stolen, the insurance company will pay us some amount of money. People sometimes get strange types of insurance. The famous actor insured his nose for a million dollars. That means if something happens to his nose by accident, then he might not look so handsome and may not be able to get acting jobs. So the insurance company will have to pay him a million dollars. So remember, insure with an E means to make sure and insure with an I means to purchase insurance for something. Number eight is affect and effect. These two words are related. Affect is a verb and it means to create a change in someone or something. It's generally used in a negative sense. For example, glaucoma is a disease that affects the eyes. Many large cities are badly affected by pollution. Effect is a noun and it means the result or the change caused by something. Too much homework can have negative effects on children. Are you sure this medicine has no side effects? Side effects means any negative effects that the medicine might produce apart from the main positive effect. So effect 